with various and natural setups, have been a large part of the endgaping hobby. Practically every single big end YouTuber has a video about vivariums. In fact, if you keep ends, you probably also have one as well. However, despite keeping ends for over 3 years, I've never had a successful vivarium. I always just use store-bought formicariums, or made tiny little enclosures with some dirt inside, and pretend that it's a vivarium. This was due to my lack of space in my end corner, and also my empty wallet. But today, this shall change. My name is Morgan, and in this video, I'll be making a 2 feet natural vivarium for my pet ends. By the way, please subscribe to my channel. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Enjoy the video! Before I start building this vivarium, I'll have to show you this. This is my colony of Campanautus irritans that you might remember from my old YouTube videos or Instagram posts. As you can see, there are a large number of dead ends accumulated in this formicarium. You might think that this is the result of a parasitic mite invasion or maybe even a sudden death, but no, this is 100% my fault. I mentioned in an older video that the two main aspects to keep ant colonies alive is their diet and their housing. Currently, they have no problems with their diet. However, their housing has quite a few problems. Let's see if you can spot them. Well, there are three main problems with this formicarium. You probably managed to guess that it is overpopulated and extremely dirty. But the biggest problem of them all lies in the ventilation. If you take a close look at the setup, you can see that the only entry and exit point is this hole with a 1cm diameter. This heavily restricts the airflow, causing various problems such as low oxygen levels and overheating. There has also been research stating that the ants will follow the airflow to determine where to dump their waste. In this formicarium, the airflow flows downwards. This results in the ants dumping their waste inside the formicarium, causing more problems such as a potential mold outbreak. This problem could have been avoided had I decided to add more waste for ants to enter, as well as make better use of the space by adding more tunnels at the side of the formicarium. In most formicariums, they will have tiny gaps in the acrylic cover and have an acrylic cover that is non-airtight. However, as I decided to use the all-in-one method with a glass tank, I could not rely on that method. The next possible method is to drill a second or maybe even a third entrance point at the base of the formicarium. This will create different points for air to enter, which will help to allow hot air to escape through the top while cooler air enters through the bottom. So, why don't I just do this now? Well, number one, Drilling glass requires special drill bits and water, which means that it's not possible to do it with living ants inside. And number two, I do not even own the drill bit in the first place. Why didn't I buy it? Because I didn't even know that drilling glass was different from drilling paper. Why? Because I didn't do research. That's why you should subscribe to my channel, so that you know what not to do and not end up making silly mistakes like me. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get to actually building the vivarium. But first, I need to introduce some friends. These are the guys who have been supporting my channel by letting me use various clips of their own ends and helping out at events in today's video. First up, we have Aitken, who brought the plants as well as the peat moss. He's also the expert in making vivariums, so he's the important guy here. Next, we have Javen. He's here to help with the building, but most importantly, he's selling me a rock that he bought for $5.99. This is not just any rock, it's a smooth rock. There's also my little bro Meryl helping out the building. And lastly, we have Tikiat, who's just here to help. Wait, sorry, I meant hang out because he's bored. And as for me, I got a 2 feet tank, some coconut chips, some cocoa peat which I bought from a local store called Just Ends. Yes, I know this is like the 8th shout out. I have in this video but the owner gave me a discount so why not. So now that we are all ready, we started building the vivarium. First, we started off by putting in pebbles into the tank. This is to create a false bottom for the vivarium which is basically a drainage area. This prevents the substrate from getting waterlogged which also prevents root rot and drowning the ends. 
this false bottom was then covered by a mesh to make sure substrate does not enter the false bottom. Next, we mix the coconut chips and cocoa bead. This is to create micro pockets in the substrate for microfauna to thrive in. After that, we put a layer of peat moss, which also has a similar effect of being airy for the ends. Now that we're done putting in the substrate, this tank is already habitable for ants. But of course, where's the fun if we aren't going to decorate it? First, we started with the rocks, and oh yeah, that reminds me. What all this can't be missed? You're right, it can't be missed. <laughs> it can't be missed. It can't be missed. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, that did not go well. But it doesn't matter. Just like how I deal with all humans, if it's a problem that can't be erased, I'll just bury it. After that, we planted the plants, added some finishing touches, put a baby powder barrier, got distracted and started shooting each other with nerf guns, and that's it, we are done. And now it's time to move the irritants into the vivarium. Stealing the idea from Ants Canada, I applied baby powder onto my tube and let them move. And now that they have settled down, I doubled their feeding rate, which I hope will help boost their speed of recovery. I also noticed that inside the vivarium, there were natural cleanup crew, such as springtails and earthworms. But unfortunately, I was not able to record them due to them being sensitive to light and the springtails being way too small for my camera to capture. Oh, and one more thing. By the way, how much have you pay off for the materials? Uh, 6969 What? Anyways, that's the end of the video. I really hope that you like this new facecam feature as well as the comedy, which I really hope sounded funny because if it didn't, that just means I sound like an idiot the entire video. So if you do like this type of content, please press the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up as it really helps out the channel a lot. Also, because I'm curious, do leave a comment with a timestamp stating your favourite part of this video. I also have many plans in the future to make this channel better, such as having new types of videos, being more active on YouTube and Instagram, and getting a new computer so that I can put cards in the video, and even subtitles, which a lot of you requested. Therefore, I also created a Discord server so that I can interact with my viewers, and also provide another platform for the endkeeping community. Anyways, that's the end of the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!